You're always gonna have good and bad in a coastal region. Today's a good day. You're probably watching this video because you're about to have a bad day. And this video is here to help you survive a hurricane. Today's gonna to be a short video about hurricane preparedness. Basically, I'm making this video because today is Thursday for me. Tomorrow will be Friday. And um, I won't be able to upload because we have a potential hurricane threat here on the east coast of Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. I've lived through more hurricanes than I can even begin to explain. I've, I've experienced a lot of them. And I have a lot of tips that are hopefully useful for you and your family to help survive a hurricane, to help prepare for one, and or to avoid one. You know, if it's a category four or five, you shouldn't be where it's gonna be. So go inland. That's the best advice I can give you. Um, or leave the state, because <laughs> some hurricanes are bigger than states. So I hope that you'll listen to what I gotta say today. Generally speaking, I like to recommend that most people clean up outside before a hurricane. That makes it easier. Um, in the aftermath. Also, if there's any loose debris, go ahead and, and take that and either put it indoors or tie it together so that it doesn't become a projectile missile, <laughs> basically with 100 mile an hour winds or close to the equivalent. If you can't put it indoors and you can't tie it up, if you have a pool, throw all you know everything that's not going to damage into the pool so that you know it actually be underwater and uh, less likely to be flying through the air and uh, hurt yourself or your property or your neighbors in their property. I recommend prior to the hurricane that you use 5 8 inch marine grade plywood to board up all windows unless you have hurricane shutters or security film or something to protect your your windows before a hurricane. And don't forget about your doors. Do something to make sure that they're secure also. Clean all your rain gutters and downspouts to make sure that they work properly. Set your refrigerator to this coldest setting prior to the hurricane hitting so that it'll actually stay colder longer. I recommend filling the gas in your car, the gas tank, the day before a hurricane comes, at least at minimum, probably two to three days before because most people are going to rush to the store to try to get one of those crucial necessities, and that's gas, so in case they need to evacuate, you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, if you live on a first or second floor of a high rise, when the storm begins, I would try to have already made arrangements to stay with your neighbors on the third floor or above. Um, if you're 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, I would probably try to stay lower or evacuate. You want to stay somewhere in the middle, but uh, basically you're trying to stay away from the flood, the surge of water. So don't stay on the first or second floor or a slab on grade home. You want to make sure it has a crawl space. I also recommend you evacuate if you live near a floodplain, near a river, or an inlet waterway. If you'll clean your bathtub and fill it full of water, that will also allow you to have an extra supply of water when you need it the most in case your water should become contaminated by the local municipality. I'm probably going to talk really fast through this video, so if you should miss a point, a key point, please feel free to rewind the uh, the video or go back and watch it again. I'm going to cover a lot of topics, and I think they're all crucial to uh, helping you and your family survive a hurricane. One, plan ahead. Know your local um, shelters, the location of all those shelters, um, and their restrictions. Some allow you don't you know, that you can't smoke there, you can't bring pets there, things of that nature. So, with that said, call ahead, find out what the restrictions are. Some are schools, you know, some of them are, are um, churches, things of that nature. 
But if you'll find out ahead of time what the restrictions are, you'll be better prepared and what you can bring. Because a lot of things you can't bring to these shelters. You're probably going to want to bring a um, a pillow, a sleeping bag, you know, things to make yourself comfortable. Some shelters don't provide food. You're probably going to want to bring what I call a bug out bag with um, a list of supplies that I'll put in the end of this video for you. These are some of the things, you know, that you'll want to bring with you. Some of the other things that are listed, you want to leave at your home so that when you return from a hurricane, you can uh, pick up from where you left off or, you know, just to help yourself. You know, you may be without power, so, you know, I may have listed something like a generator that will help you feel comfortable once you get home. If you can't go to a shelter, if, if the hurricane is probably going to be a four or five or, you know, even a strong three, and you need to evacuate, you're going to need to know your evacuation routes. I recommend you know at least two evacuation routes uh, at a minimum. If you don't have a car, arrange to have a family member possibly pick you up, or if you have special needs or somebody in your family has special medical needs, um, you may want to ask the local um, authorities if there's a registry in case the power goes out. Um, but either way, you want to make sure that you can be in a safe place whether it's at a shelter, at your home, um, or out of town. With that said, if you should get separated from your family members, pick a meeting place in town and out of town in case you get separated. Also, pick an out-of-town friend to call to report all family members are safe in case you do get separated. One of the biggest things I can stress before a hurricane is get flood insurance if you don't have it. If you can't get it for your place, um, I recommend having a safe that's fireproof and waterproof at, at your home to keep your important documents in. Um, you may need to keep some of those documents with you when you leave. Some of the other ones you may want to leave. Um, old pictures, things of that nature, you want to throw in your safe just to protect them because you know they're pretty much irreplaceable. Um, I think all the family members should know how to shut off the electricity, the gas, and the water before the start of hurricane season um, in case there's a crisis. Also, with that said, let's talk about some of the things you might want to bring with you. Um, a three-day supply of water. Most government agencies recommend that it's one gallon per person per day. I personally recommend a little more because you may want to wash your hands, sanitary. I mean, there's a, there's so many different benefits. Water is one of the most crucial things that you need. So I recommend at least two to three gallons. That's my personal recommendation, you know. But <laughs> currently I have stocked for myself three to four gallons per day per person um, and per pet, you know, because I have animals. I want to make sure that they're okay also. That's something I wanted to touch on earlier, is the shelters may or may not allow you to actually um, bring pets. So you want to make arrangements ahead of time in case they don't allow that to happen either. You want to have, once again, three-day supply of water, um, three-day supply of non-perishable food that doesn't require cooking, a flashlight with extra batteries, a radio, um, I have an, an example of a radio that I'll show later in the video, but basically that is battery powered, solar powered, crank powered, and has NOAA, N-O-A-A, capability. You want a first aid kit with an instruction manual, um, a seven day supply of medications. Also, I recommend you clean and fill your bathtub so that you'll have water when you need it the most because the municipality system's water may have been contaminated during the hurricane and you want to have fresh water to drink, to bathe in, or whatever. Also, I recommend unplugging all small appliances, especially sensitive ones, and turn off all propane tanks. That includes um, the ones to your home, if, if they're freestanding for maybe a fireplace outside, or a barbecue grill. Go ahead and cut those off. And if possible, store those indoors also, maybe in a garage or something. When the storm starts, you wanna stay away from the doors and windows and avoid using a home phone during the storm because you may get electrocuted. It's possible. I know it's slim, but I have to throw it out there. <laughs> um, I recommend using a pillow or mattress to protect your head and your body. 
and you want to stay in the interior part of your home, maybe in a doorway or in a closet that's somewhere in the center of your home that's probably um, the most sound. I recommend that you monitor all weather conditions um, via a radio, hopefully a battery powered radio or a solar powered radio or a hand crank powered radio. And uh, don't leave your safe place until uh, the officials give it the okay for you to leave. A lot of people try to go out in the middle of an eye of a hurricane. Not a great idea. You can get yourself killed or injured easily or your family members. So please stay indoors until you know the all safe is given to go outside again. If you lose electricity, keep your circuit breakers off until the power is restored. Then check for frayed wires or down lines. If you see any, call from a cell phone. Call your local power company and um, report these issues so that they can handle them. I also recommend don't ever enter a home if you're returning from a hurricane and there's floodwaters in the home or around the home because you may uh, get electrocuted from a down power line that you don't see that may be down the street. You know, So be sure that you wait until the waters have receded and it's dry to walk into your home. If you have any safety concerns about staying and riding out a hurricane where you're at, find somewhere else to go. If you live in a mobile home, I recommend that you evacuate and stay with friends family or go get a hotel room but I don't recommend riding out a hurricane in a in a mobile home if you have any safety concerns about when you return to your house about any structural damage please contact a building inspector or a structural engineer to come and evaluate your home before you enter it so that you don't get yourself or your family hurt I recommend that you use the FEMA guidelines for preparing for a hurricane. It's a free list that they have. Um, just look up the Federal Emergency Management Agency. You can look those up online and maybe make a printout of what they recommend along with what I recommend and keep it on your refrigerator with a magnet or tape it to your refrigerator so that it's there when you need it. I know preparing for a hurricane um, can be costly, so do it in little steps. Uh, everybody's budget's different and um, as you have the money if you'll put some of these things aside it will help you in the future when you need it the most